Hi, uh, it's Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. It's December 22nd, 2019, and uh, I've noticed some some really nice growths on my uh, on my Cattleya nobiliores and one of my Cattleya walkerianas. And when I say nice growths, I mean um, bloom spikes. So I figured I would show that to you a little bit right now, um, and kind of let you know maybe where your plants should be at this time of year. So I'm going to start out with my, my Cattleya walkeriana. Uh, typically at this time of the year, they're blooming already. Uh, it's, it's generally considered a fall blooming species, but um, happy plants of this species can bloom more than once a year. Uh, so um, here it is. This is a little Cattleya walkeriana cerulea, Edward. Uh, I got this again, as I, I talk about so often, from my, my friend Raphael in New York. Um, his YouTube channel is Taming the Orchid. He gets some really cool stuff. And this is the little spike coming up here. So, as you can see by my squinty eyes and the, the sunshine here, it's very bright right now. It's, it's about midday. And um, one of the cool things, or one of the interesting things about Cattleya walkeriana and nobilior is that they create a completely new growth for their blooms. So typically when you think of, about a Cattleya blooming, uh, it comes at the top here and, and you know you get your blooms. And as the guys behind me start to do that in the spring, I'll, I'll, I'll make plenty of videos for it. Um, but this, these two species typically make a new growth. Occasionally you'll get them growing at the top, but that, that's kind of unusual. Um, so I was pretty happy when I saw this little spike popping up and if for some reason I am misjudging it and it turns out to be a new growth rather than a spike, I'll let you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is a, a, a new spike. And like I said, most of the uh, Wakurianas are typically blooming this time of year, so um, this one's got a little bit of a late start. Uh, I've got another much larger one uh, that I can see right there, and it's this—it's a big thing, um, and it's still cranking out new growths. So I think I think this year's really hot, extended summer um, kind of tricked these guys into a, a longer growing season, which, which is is not terrible. Um, it just means that you get later blooms. So this is a cerulea. Uh, like I said, it's the clone Edward. I don't recall if that one's been awarded or not, but if this blooms at the same time as the one I'm about to show you, which is a Cerulea nobilior, I'm probably going to make that cross. Uh, I'll do it both ways, and that would be um, Cattleya Brazilian Jewel. So Brazilian Jewel is, is simply nobilior by Wakariana. That's the artificial hybrid. Uh, there is a natural hybrid called Cattleya mesquite, and you can find that in the wild. Um, so this is one of those cases, and it's not always true, but this is one of those cases where the, the natural hybrid um, has a separate name than the man-made hybrid. And I can't really tell you why uh, some types of orchids have that and some don't. Uh, it, it's kind of weird. Uh, in any case, I think it'll be a cool hybrid. Um, Cattleya walkeriana and nobilior can be grown similarly, and I've talked about this in other videos. Uh, this time of the year, uh, they, they like a significantly drier season than um, when they're in active growth. In previous years, I would have just simply stopped watering for three, four, five, six months until new growths come out. Uh, but some of my friends in Brazil have said, hey, you don't necessarily need to do that. So I am just watering um, with all my other Cattleyas behind me, which is about once a week this time of year, once or twice a week. And uh, the pseudobulbs are still fat. And you know my Nobiliors are, and Wakarianas are both putting out new bloom spikes, which is great. The next one that I'm gonna show you, this is one from Francisco Miranda that I got many years ago and just has decided it, it didn't wanna bloom for me. So I got it when the growths were still pretty small. And over the past couple of years, uh, it's just put out monstrous new growths. And, and 
not gonna lie, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. Um, so this year in 2019, I got one, two, three new bulbs, three separate flushes of growth. So our, our growing season is really, really long. So to see this one about to bloom with this spike here, I'm super excited for. Uh, so this, like I said, is from Francisco Miranda. Uh, it is his number one clone by his number two clone. And that, that's actually what they're called. Um, and I am hoping that it looks good. If it's a, a real dog, I probably won't cross it. Maybe I will. I don't know. In any case, there's a good chance that I'll get a reciprocal cross and create Brazilian jewel cerulea um, with this. I don't know that Brazilian jewel is necessarily crossed and grown in the United States very often. I actually just purchased one from the internet. Um, it's got a bloom spike coming out. It was shipped with a bloom spike. I think the bloom spike is dying. Um, spiking cat layers can be temperamental and difficult. So if you if you ship your plant while it's actively spiking, there's a good chance that spike is going to die. Uh, also, there's a really good chance that if you simply even just move your plant at the wrong time during the spiking process, uh, that spike will abort. So as I'm picking these up, I wanted to make sure that I put them back in the right position. So I... Uh, you see this mark here? This lets me know exactly where on the bench it was, or at least what position on the bench it was, so that I can put it back and it won't disturb the orientation of the sun to the spike and cause it to abort. I would be so sad if this spike aborted. But I want to let you guys know that I'm filming this and risking these bloom spikes to help you out and inform you. Uh, I hope this video turns out to be useful. As I'm going over this plant, I'm seeing a few um, hard scale pop-up. Um, one of the things, so I, as you probably know, I, I mostly grow outside. Um, and there's a lot of predators here in Texas of orchid pests. So I don't typically have problems with mealies or scale or, or, or anything, to be honest, um, because there's that good predator-prey balance. But now that they're in the greenhouse, I kind of wonder if the scale is taking this opportunity to taking this opportunity of a f relatively predator-free environment to explode. Uh, I'm gonna have to go over this after this video. I'm gonna go over these with a, a toothbrush and some rubbing alcohol and um, scrub the the hard scale off. And if I come back in a week or two and that doesn't really work, um, I will have to use some harsh chemicals and to be honest I haven't had to use chemicals in a couple of years so um, I have no problems using hard chemicals I just don't normally need to so uh, Cerulea nobiliore blooming massive bulbs uh, a small scale problem Dang. <clears throat> finally the, the largest plant that I want to look at I'm going to reach up and grab it here. Uh, this is pretty big nobiliore that I've had for a bunch of years. Um, you can see the size of the pot. Uh, this is just a tipo. This is your, your standard um, nice dark pink standard nobiliore. Uh, the other nobiliore that I typically bloom so I've got an Alba which is a variety of Malii and then I have just a regular variety of Malii. The variety of Malii um, is grown in a different part of Brazil. It's a little drier and a little hotter uh, than Nobiliore, regular Nobiliore. Regular Nobiliore grows in an area, a part of Brazil that's even hotter and drier than where Wacariana typically grows. So you have this sort of increasing um, zone of aridity so Wacariana can it be in a fairly dry habitat. Nobiliore is even drier. Nobiliore variety Malii is even drier than that. That said, let's get to the spikes here. So you can see the new growth spike coming out here. 
and a larger one coming out right Let's see if we can get that on camera for you right there so I anticipate um, this one will bloom probably April maybe um, but, you know that that's the bloom spikes on these guys is not a, a fast process so there's plenty of time for things to go wrong um, including rotating the plant uh, or at least having it in a different orientation to the Sun than what it's used to a, a large-scale scale infection could also nuke a spike so I'm gonna have to take, take, take care of that one on that one that I just showed you and hopefully hopefully in a couple months I will have at least two nobiliors blooming for you so I have uh, one, two, three additional plants that are of blooming size. I also got some imports um, from Floralia this past July 2019 that, let me put this down, that I have inside under lights. And they're doing really, really well. So I'm hoping to get um, some import blooms on my Floralia plants uh, this year or this coming year 2020 I don't know if that's actually gonna happen or not there's a really good chance that they're still adjusting to our seasons that their blooming season is switched as they are in Brazil since the seasons are uh, uh, switched compared to the northern hemisphere anyway that's all I wanted to talk to you today about um, so uh, I've got bloom spike on Wakriana, Nobilior Hopefully no more nobilio or soon. Uh, these guys take a fairly dry winter. In previous years, I have given them absolutely no water, almost like macadacetums, uh, for up to six months. And that seems okay. Uh, I've had some friends in Brazil tell me it's not necessary to stress your plants like that. Um, so I am watering like once a week, and everything seems to be going well. Hopefully I will be able to show you bloom pictures or bloom vote, uh, video in a couple months. Bye.